Shit. Hey. Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Gonna- check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing, my Man, another day. Mm-hmm. God done made another way. Exactly. Man, hey, we got a very, very, very special guest in here, man. This guy really don't need no introduction. Not after all the ruckus he done, he done, uh, brought up you know uh uh with what he uh, have accomplished and uh we definitely uh we we love our city man we 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 represent dallas to the fullest man and you can't rep it without knowing this guy here man jason todd man how you doing brother Go, going pretty good man, man. <laughs> going pretty good it's the coach from sock yes sir sapho cliff yes sir man how you do it you know what I'm saying? yeah <laughs> It's going real good this time. Of oh year. man, I, I know it. I know it's different than what it, what, what it's been being. Yeah, because because a, a winning season over a season that you had to go back sad. Yeah. It's totally different, ain't it? Yeah, it is. But, you know, <laughs> so, everybody else so happy. Man, and, and I know how we do it here. We do it a little bit different than everybody else. Uh, go- yeah, we'd like to go into <laughs> um, your background. So we want to know where you grew up. We want to know um, single parent house, household, yeah. all of that. So take us back. Okay, yeah, I was I was born in a single uh, single parent home with my mother. Uh, uh, we were raised in uh, South Dallas, over okay. there in the forty four Oakland uh, area. Uh, my grandmother stayed in Oak Cliff, grandmother, grandfather. So I was kind of you know go back and forth between the Oak Cliff area and the South Dallas area. Uh, uh, went to Lincoln High School. Uh, play football for Coach Samples, uh, end up getting a scholarship, going to Texas Southern University. Uh, from that standpoint, you know, I played football about four years, graduated from college. You Where know. was your dad during all of this time? Oh, n- never met him in, in my life. Never? Uh, no, man. Did you know who he was? I know the name, but I, I we never encountered each other or, or ever had a conversation. And did your wow. mom know where he was? Yep. Mm-hmm. But you were never interested to find him? Mm-mm, can't miss nobody you never seen. I've heard that. Maybe it's just girls. Girls be like, yeah. you know, emotional. So they be like, I want to know who my dad is. Yeah. Or some boys might want to know. But I always tell people, um, because I see a lot of mothers, and I don't know if this is your mom's uh-huh. case or not, will keep the kids from the dad. And sometimes the dad will stay purposely away. But I always feel that for medical reasons, especially, yes. you need to know your genealogy. You need to know what. Because, you know, when you go to the doctor, they say, okay, is this in your family? Is that in your family? You yes. can only speak on one side. You don't know what's on the other side. Yeah, that's true. So for medical reasons, especially, you want to know. You know what I mean? Even yeah. if you don't have a relationship, you want to know some sort of information. Well, let me double down. You know I, I, you know me. I'm always, let me play the other side for a minute like I was the <laughs> opponent. I believe in Jesus Christ, just me personally. And I think that by his stripes, I'm healed. So there is no sickness that I can't overcome because of what I believe in. So I'm a little bit different. So I understand who my parents is, but that don't matter if you get caught up in a place where your mind state ain't right. Your health ain't going to be right either. Yeah, that's true. You see what I'm saying? So you got, and I, in order for me to really understand, I have to tap into the spiritual, but in the natural man, like you talking about, yeah, it'd be cool to know about your dad, but in the spiritual man, I've overcome the world. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but how so, did you feel as a child growing up not having him in your in your life? Uh, you know, I had my grandfather and my uncle. So, oh, so you did have male yeah, figures. Yeah, I had male figures, so, you know, it wasn't like I was just absent of any males in the family. Mm-hmm. You know, I still had people I had to respect and kept me in line and things like that to help my mother out, but it was no direct lineage, you know, to my father, so. And that's awesome to me. It's bad, but it's good because for the main fact that um, you you can now help other kids, you know, in that situation. Yes. To be able to overcome that because not every not every child can be like you. Yes. And have that mindset at a young age. Some some kids are emotional. Yes. And um, act out in yes. a negative way because of that. Yeah, and I always tell you know the kids I coach, you know, and kids I come across that. You know, we can't use it as an excuse. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, it, it's not a good situation, but you got to make the best, uh, make the best of a lot of bad situations you encounter in life. So, you know, like I tell them all the time, if if you met your father, you already, you know, <laughs> know yours. If it one minute or one day, mm-hmm. you know, you've known him, you know, a lot longer than I know mine personally. So, uh, you know, besides just a name, so right. you know, it helps me also with guys that lose their parents. You know, mm-hmm. I can relate back to them, be like, man, you got to. At least you got a lot of memories, you know, that you can hold on for the rest of life. 
You know what? And that's good because I really feel like God put us through situations in life to place us in certain situations to help us, to to have us be prepared to help others. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. You might not see it at that time when we're going through something, but later on in life we might figure it out. Well, I think he already, I mean, things are are pretty much set in in course. I mean, you you look at everybody's story so much different, you know, when you look at life and and life, you know, it's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. You know, when you look at, um, some of the things you've been through and the way you've been able to deal with the children that you've encountered even before the championship and yes. all that, that's God working you out to be in these kids' life and be that yes. father figure. You've been a father figure to so many now. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. That, yes. That, exactly. that basically, um, it, I don't know if that tenacity in you because of you not having that place of a father, yes. that would help like like mm-hmm. a lot of times. Some people it affect in one way and some people it affect in another. And I thank God yeah. that you've been placed in them kids' life, you know? Yeah. Did you have siblings? Uh, no, only child also. Really? That's dope. Yeah, so. On your mom's side that you know about. Yeah, 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 on my mom's <laughs> side that I know about. So, you know, you know if it's anybody else, you know, hey, you know, it is what it is. Because you could meet somebody with the same last name and not know if that they're your brother or sister. Yeah, well, they wouldn't actually have. I yeah. kept oh, my, you my had mom kept your name. mom's last yeah. name. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 I'm a Todd. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, we see that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. To, to uh, do what you have accomplished, man, um, that, that school's a 5A school, too, wasn't it? Yes, yes, we're a 5A division, uh, division, division two. two, yes. Yeah. But um, you said after university, you, sorry, you were going back to telling me the coming up to um, now. You, you, okay. I, I cut you in at university. So after university, what did you do? Uh, university of Texas Southern, I graduated and I came back. Uh, really didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew I wanted to be a coach. So that means I had to you know, get certified to be a teacher. So uh, I went and talked to Coach Samples and uh, Earl Jones, who was the principal at Lincoln High School, the school I graduated from. They told me the steps I needed to do along with talking to my grandfather because he was like an assistant superintendent at the time. Okay. So, uh, you know, we set everything up. I got an AC program. uh, And from that point in 2001, you know, I started, uh, I became a teacher and a coach. Why did you want to be a coach? uh, Because it wasn't work to me. You know, it it, it was just, coaching is just natural. You know, it's just something I always envisioned from when I was younger. and, and, And just to see the amount of people that, you know, you can do a lot of things in life, but everybody got some input and, and some thought about what a coach should do. Mm-hmm. You know, so so that meant a lot to me, too. So it was just a, a personal challenge that I thought, you know, it wasn't going to work. It was something I really enjoyed doing. And they said, if you can find a job that you really enjoy exactly. doing, which is working with kids and coaching football and teaching, you know, hey, you never work a day in your life. Did you ever meet a coach that um, when you were younger that affected your life? They said, you know what? That is a great example of a coach that I would love to be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Who coach, was that? Coach Charles Walton at Atwell uh, Middle School. He was my first football coach. And he probably was, uh, had the big impression on me uh, as far as just the way he, he stayed at Atwell for for decades, you mm-hmm. know, and he stayed committed to that program. And uh, you could uh, follow the success of the kids that he touched, you know, through decades from the 70s all the way up to probably about 2000. You know, he, he had a major influence on a lot of kids around the area. You know, and then going to work for, uh, with Coach Samples at uh, Lincoln. Uh, also, Coach Ricky Lewis, you know, was another guy that, that, that taught me how to work with hard heads, but, but but you can get them in line and make them, you know, march to your, your beat. Was, how do you do that? Because um, my hats go off to any teacher. Yeah. Because to work with difficult kids, yes. and yes, you don't know what they're going through in at home because usually that's where it stems from, why they're so difficult sometimes. Yes. But how do you get through to these kids? I, I think the first thing, they got to see that you really care and, and that you're not going to back down and you're not afraid of them. You know, that, that's the first thing I would say. Uh, you know, he always came to work and just from looking at him, you know, as a kid, he always had just this mean look on his face from the moment you saw him. You like, man, because <laughs> Lewis don't play. So, you know, from that standpoint, as you grew to know him, you find out he really was a cool dude. Mm-hmm. But he always put that hard, you know, that hard demeanor out there to, you know, to show I'll get down with anybody around here and, and I'm a grown up and y'all some kids. And, yeah. they, and that was real big. So they had to peel them layers back. Yes, 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 sir. Yeah, man, that's dope, man. Uh, like I said, I, I just commend you for for what you done in the Dallas uh, uh, area high school. How long have you been coaching over there for, for uh, SOC? Uh, SOC, I've been there for eight years, seven as the head coach, uh, 20 total years coaching. So it's going okay. two, two decades uh my first year to start coaching was actually when the uh, World Trade Center, when the planes bombed. 
that was like my fifth day of teaching. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's nice, man. And um so you guys, man, uh um what was it was it hard? I mean, far as um being a, a, you was in a, of course you a brother and you, you was teaching it and I don't want to go too far in detail, yeah. but uh, being a uh, a brother teaching, uh, you know, coaching, going into different, uh, different areas, yes. uh, dealing with it. I know you've seen some things. I'll keep it light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, know you, you, you know, you see a lot of things and you kind of understand why a lot of these kids may act out and do some of the things they do. And a lot of things that they experience and their upbringing that, that, that really a kid shouldn't have to go through. And, and you kind of, once you, if you're from that area, you can understand it and deal with it better. But if you're not from the area, you know, you're looking down on the kid that don't understand the situation. And, and, and that's what I'm able to do. I'm able to relate because I grew up, you know, in high school, I was sitting in class with the first person that was uh, charged as a minor for uh, capital murder. Mm-hmm. You know, according to Hoop, I, I still remember that, you know, to this day. And he's a real cool cat, you know, but he's been in jail since that moment. You know, you know things like that. So, so going back, how old were you when that happened? Uh, I had to be a freshman or sophomore. We were in the same grade. Same so grade. I think we were sixteen years old. So we probably were sophomores that year. And y'all heard about it? This was a, was it something that he done off campus? Yeah, it was off off campus uh, dealing with uh, the Morehouse uh, kid. Yeah. Uh, down by Bonton. Mm-hmm. You know, in that area. You know, and just lost a lot of guys that came in with me as freshmen that that, that were gone. You know, killed and. Things like that before we even graduated high school. So, what do you think about the like um, the, the the bullying and and just the kids fighting and just like the shooting that happened over there at that school and I believe in the McLeod. Where, I mean, uh, Mansfield. Was it Mansfield. Mansfield. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, times are different now, and, and you got to realize that a lot of people are imitating what they see on TV now, mm-hmm. and so it's not where where the streets dictate what's on TV. The, the TV dictates how the streets act now. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It used to be like the 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 rappers. Didn't want to. They were trying to rap to get out of the street life, but now it's like they, it's all intertwined together, yeah. where it's mixed in. But the yeah. real street guys wish they could get out of the game, mm. you know. Mm. So, so it's kind of like that. So I call it a BET lifestyle. Yeah, you know, it's kind of you living a lifestyle of what you see on see, TV every day, TV, yeah. but the results in real life totally different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah because I see, um, I know some um, grown men now who used to play football when they were in high school, yeah. and they would say. Um, it was just a thing that high school football players would bully other kids, especially nerds and stuff like that. It was just a thing that just happened back then. You know, kids yeah. never used to draw guns and do all of that, just fight out, throw kids in trash cans, whatever. Yes. And I'm like, but bullying is bullying. You know, just because you're a, fo- a jock, a football player, that don't mean that you have the right to do that. But they said it's just a thing that, you know, they did. So do you see that still happening no, today? You, no, you, you kind of don't see as much horseplay as you used yeah. to. Uh, but but also, you know, it, I wouldn't say it's kind of stuck with athletes. You know, it's kind of like a, you know, you got different cliques within within the school. You know, you got the guys that allegedly want to be street guys. You know, you, you got the guys that play sports. You got the guys that, that, that kind of dance in between the two. You know, and then you had the guys that, that, you know, more bookie, you know, book books type of guys and things mm-hmm. like that. So it, it's so intertwined now, and now everybody really thinks they street, mm-hmm. you know, more so than it used to be in the past. You know, I knew what my lane was, and, and my partners that I grew up with that were in that life, they were like, nah, y'all gone on and, you know, move on because, mm-hmm. you know— it, it, this ain't y'all area right here. Right, y'all right. play football. Y'all, y'all gonna do that when it's time y'all to have get a to future. some. Yeah, when it's time to get to some other stuff. Now nah, y'all gone on. You know mm-hmm. they ain't let us mess around like that. Yeah. Now, now the ones that were like that, you know they were like that. Now they wouldn't let nobody bother us or anything like that. They'll stand up and defend us before we even had the thought to defend ourselves. Mm-hmm. But that just how it was. They protected their own mm-hmm. and knew the ones that were gonna be something. You know they wanted them to be successful. Just you know more so than themselves. Yeah, I hear stories about stuff like that. I wish a lot more of that would be going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, do you, um, when you when you look back and think back to all those different kids that you dealt with, what what's the case that sticks out to you the most? Where where it touched you in a way to where you say, man, that was a, a, a special situation. It don't have to be yeah. that it was on the football field. Either. Yeah. Just all around, it was a special situation for you. Uh, it, it's been a lot. A couple of that I, that I say to stand out, you know, my coach career was uh, when we lost in the state championship in Lincoln. You know, we had a sophomore kid that, uh, that was going to be a hell of a football player. Uh, and he ended up, he was a great kid, you know, like did everything in life correctly, you know, never was a discipline problem. And, uh, 
he just happened to be at a party in Grand Prairie about a week or two after we lost in the state game, and uh, he was just an innocent bystander that got shot. Mm. And to see, you know, like to see him live his life him wanting to be like the guys that were seniors on that team. You know, everything he did, he wanted to be like Courtney Herndon. He wanted to be like, you know, those Byron Eton and all those guys. And then for it to be taken away, you know, it, it, it really hurt you. And then, you know, you mem- you know, you reminisce on those things. Uh, also, you know, we had kids that that didn't allow their circumstances to dictate their life. Uh, we had a kid named uh, Keenan Cooper uh, okay. that, that went to uh, Skyline. Uh, was an All-American, straight-A kid. But he had a lot of problems in his home life, but he never allowed – he was he was watching his sister pretty much by herself mm-hmm. growing up. Uh, but he never asked for help, never asked for a ride home. You know, like you never would know without really being able to dig in later on and him kind of telling you some of these things. And, uh, you know, it's just kids like that that, you know, you see them dealt different hands and a lot of them are still great kids. And, and you just like, dang. Whatever happened with him? Was he? No, uh, yeah, he, he's coaching. Uh, he, he went to Minnesota, was a three-year starter, graduated yeah. from college, uh, coached a little bit in college, uh, still living in Minnesota, uh, got a couple of kids now. You know, he came back and visited me over Christmas break. So, uh, you know, he's doing good. So, you know, it's it's a lot of successful stories that, uh, you know, that I remember just through the years. And that was just a couple. But, yeah, you, you know, these kids, they, they they go through a lot, though. And a lot of times people judge them but don't understand them. Do, yeah, yeah especially get, in certain areas, too. Do you, yeah. Do you have any uh, – that made NFL and all that good stuff? Yeah, I actually, uh, Michael Morgan was a player. I coached at Skyline. Uh, he went to USC. Uh, he won a, a Super Bowl with uh, with the Seattle Seahawks. Okay. Uh, Corey Nelson was a kid that I coached. Uh, he won a Super Bowl with the Denver Broncos. Okay. Uh, coach Steve Williams, he was drafted by the Chargers. Uh, Do they call you? Uh, we talk from time to time. You know, you know, like, like I always tell the kids, you know, once I've done my job with you, all I want y'all to do is come back and maybe help another kid one day. You know, I don't want to be in no pictures. You know, I don't want to be, you know, I just want to do my part to push you. And then once I pushed you to that point, just make sure you come back and help a kid that was in a situation just like you one day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got uh, Taylor Gabriel coming today. Yeah, I, I coached against him when he he'll was at Mesquite be, Home. Yeah, he'll mm-hmm. be here today. And, um, you know, we definitely uh, – we I never seen that coming when he was a kid. I never would have told you. I thought, yeah, he was too little. But, I ain't gonna lie, but I played when when you could be too little yeah. back in the day. But I didn't know how fast he was. But 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 he's a good story too because when I think he went to Midwestern State. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you saw him in high school, went to Midwestern State, you never knew. Okay, that kid would be in the NFL one yeah. day. Mm-hmm. But it just shows you that it's not about where you go. You know, it's all about capitalizing the opportunity that you exactly. have. And you yeah. never know where that opportunity can lead you to. Correct. Meeting the right people, having the right attitude. How mm-hmm. much does that weigh on you? Uh, th- 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 that means a lot about not burning bridges. You yeah. know, the biggest thing is sometimes it's not about for somebody to cross the bridge to you. is that you may have to humble yourself and cross that bridge back to them. And that's kind of what I tell the kids all the time is that, you know, don't burn a bridge because that bridge, you know, you can keep yourself stranded. Man, I gotta, and you know, I watch a lot of movies, so and, and I see certain situations in football movies. Yes. So, um, have you ever seen a situation where a parent um, pressuring the kids, or even somewhere abusing their child because they're not doing well in football, and like you gonna get to the NFL because you gonna get us out of this situation, yeah. type of thing? I, I have seen it to the degree, like, you know, we're about getting to the NFL, but, you know, a lot of parents do live through their kids, mm-hmm. you know, and, and a lot of times have unrealistic expectations of their kids. So, you know, sometimes it does put a lot of pressure on the kid, but I haven't seen it to that extent where, you know, it's about you getting us out of this situation and, and everything riding on your back. I haven't seen it to that degree, but I have seen parents live through kids. Okay. Yeah. I just... Um, how did it feel after all of these years for you to um, to accomplish what you accomplished and win in the state championship like that? Uh, the the biggest thing was that man to to, to kind of put it in words is like for something that you you strive for every day, but you never know if you're gonna really get there, and then kind of see the promised land. It, like words can't really describe it because it's kind of like a feeling that I don't even know the word to describe. It. You know, like like it's, it's no word to really describe that feeling because at the end of the day, it's like, hey, did we really do this? So it's kind of like you're still in the dream world, you know, yeah. to to a certain degree where, you know, shoot, you know, it's 
man, it, it was like a something you've been preaching to somebody on blind faith all these years. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and they just been walking with you blindfolded, not knowing mm-hmm. where you're taking them. But then to finally get there. So, mm-hmm. you know, I related to like believing in the Bible. If you believe in the Bible, like mm-hmm. did that sea really part? That's you, it. That's you, it. You know, mm-hmm. that, that you put all them animals on that boat. So, that's it. you know, come from our neighborhood because we so chastised and say what we can't do and we ain't good enough and we ain't smart enough. We can't control the kids. It's our talent. So you so beat down so much that when you get to this point, you know, you, you really just want to look at everybody, you know, and just go off, you know, yeah, really. Yeah, Because yeah. the last time a team from Dallas won was in the 1950s. 1950s. Yeah. I mean, 58, uh, 58. is what they say in the record books, but it's 1988. You yeah, know, and I know oh, why you know. say that, yeah. because of what that? happened. Why? Be- because Carter I'm... actually won state in 88, mm-hmm. but later, a couple of years later, they, they were stripped it. of the title. Okay, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, you yeah. know, I was at the stadium. I saw it. I saw them score the touchdowns. I saw the score with 31 and 14, I believe. So I witnessed it. So... You know, they can't take the they victory away from me yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, and I get that because you've seen it and you understand what those kids went through to get yeah. what they got. Mm-hmm. And everybody wasn't to be blamed. Yeah. Right. And, and how many years were you coaching at the school that you're coaching at now? Before uh, the, this is my eighth year. Eighth year. Yes, seventh so, as a head coach. With saying that, and this ended up being the year that that happened, what was the formula compared to all the other years that made this be the year? Uh uh, I, th- I think the biggest thing was that, that you know, a lot of teams I've been a part of, we had some talented teams. And I, I think sometimes it's not just about talent. Well, it's not about talent. Some some things not coaching. Some stuff is just how the ball falls sometimes, you know, and uh, that, that gets you over the final hump. And uh, mm-hmm. with this group, we, would ex- we were able to execute on offense at a high level this year. And we've been playing state championship caliber defense for, for some years. But this year, our quarterback play, our offensive play calling, it was like, you know, whenever the situation come up, like we right there. Right there. So it's like you playing you play blackjack? Yes. Okay. All the time. <laughs> yeah. So 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 you the dealer and every time somebody they got twenty, you hit it with a twenty one. Mm-hmm. Every time they think they won, bam, you right there. So, you know, that that's really how it was this year. It was just a you, you could feel it coming, but but at the same time you didn't want to be like we arrived. Yeah, you don't want to put until that you arrive. Until yeah, you arrive. Yeah, yeah, until you arrive, which go back to one I saying is like winning ain't never won. No. You know, no. and uh, you know, until long as it's time on that clock, you know, it ain't over. You still just winning. But we wanna win when you won, it's over. See, I asked you that question for you, but not only for you, because I think about the Cowboys. How <laughs> yeah. how every year they come all the way up to the playoffs and they you know, and everybody's cheering for them and not everybody every year. Have, yeah. not every year and have the high hopes and I'm dying for that year. Yeah. But you just don't know when that year is going to be when they take that championship back. Yeah. And what is know. it going to take for that to happen? It normally takes something that, that that's bigger than winning in order to, to drive you. I like that. You understand? So, so it, it, it can't just be about winning the Super Bowl or winning a state championship. It's got to be something that motivates you way deeper than that. And, and that's kind of what motivated us. You know, we're all uh, a minority staff, you know, so – People don't think we can be good as coaches. You know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we got kids that come from different environments. People think those kids can't be can't, coached. Yeah, can't be coached, can't be productive. Uh, you come from a community, a community that that's, that's you know, not, not economically powerful, you know, as far as money goes and things like that. But what we did, we took all those negatives and then we just we just channeled it and it ate it up and then it became a positive. So we didn't use any situation as a negative for us. Like we didn't say Oh, we had to ride a bus for two years, and nobody, you know, nobody cared about that. Or, uh, you know, these kids went through this situation for this amount of t- time in their life, and nobody cares. Or we don't have the same things that Alito has, or some of these other stuff. We ain't use no excuses, and when and it became something bigger than us as we began to plan have success this year, where it was about Dallas, mm-hmm. it was about the community. You know, it was about being like I tell those kids, y'all legends. You know, mm-hmm. if you want to be a legend. Do what legends do, something nobody else has ever done. And so the thing I pride them uh, the most about is that when Carter, they were going through situations dealing with the legal system, you know, the whole way through, and, they, and that locked them in. We didn't have those situations, you know, to help us get locked in. So it was strictly motivation from within with the team, the coaches, and the players all being in the boat. And we kind of uh, describe it as uh, like the uh, boys in the hood theory. You know, we don't want Trey to get in the car. To let him out. Mm-hmm. We want everybody to be in the car that's going to stay in the car. Mm-hmm. Now, if we're doing something Trey can't do, then we ain't going to add Trey to get in. Mm-hmm. 
That's right. But once we lock in this car, ain't no getting out. If we crash, we crash together. Mm -hmm. If we ride, we ride together. That's and, it. And that's kind of mindset, you know, these kids had, these boys had. Nobody could break their bond. I want to know um, that day when y'all won, because in my imagination, if I was in your shoe, it wouldn't be all about me, of course, because you seem very humble. So it wasn't yeah. about you. It was about them kids. Yes. How, what was the reaction like and the environment like with the kids at that time when they won uh, and I, all the emotions? I, I think, you know, you saw some of them with tears in their eyes. You know, some of them just were just elated and happy. Uh, the, the hard part about it is you're not able to celebrate with your team like you normally do because it's people pulling you here, you got to go here, you got to turn around, you got to put medals on. You know, so it's so scripted in that game that you don't naturally get the natural Right. The natural aura of, of how it normally is after a game. Yeah. But, you know, you, you can see by watching the video on TV and stuff, like a lot of those kids, they, they were touched because even when they won, in their minds, they're still thinking like, Did this really happen? it got to be something else we got to do. <laughs> you know, there's no way that this is it and it's over because you've been striving for something so long. And, and a lot of times, like I tell them kids and the parents and everybody, them kids, they play for a lot of times for the grown-ups. That's right. B because the kid don't really, you know, it ain't that important to them since Dallas ain't won since this. But if they see you care, then they care, and they care more about you being successful than their own selves. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm saying we're able to touch souls over that side of the cliff as far as reaching kids and making them buy in. That's Jason Todd, y'all. Um, Coach Jason Todd. Head coach Jason Todd. <laughs> it's going down, Jason Todd. Next year, how many we got coming back? We, we got a lot coming back. Uh, you know, we got some key – you know, a couple of key pieces to replace, but 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 the boat is loaded. All right. Yes. So we expect another. Um, we don't know yet. <laughs> we got to wait till we get there, and 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 we got you got game for game, week for week. You don't know. Yes. But you got to bring it every week. Yeah, yeah. We got to bring it. See, it, and that's what a lot of people get. Football and people gonna be looking to try to knock them down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but football is won from January until July. That's right. You know, that, that's where you put in the work to win in August, September, you know, in November, December. It's not, it doesn't start then, it starts now. So we mm -hmm. already back in the lab. We are, the kids are already working. We ain't chasing nobody around, you know, finding them, you know, they, they locked in. So as long as they put in the work, I can take any result we get at the end of the day. I know that's right. That's yeah. good stuff right there. Yeah. And just to build in relationship with those kids, man. Yes. Yeah. I, I have to go back to that, you know, because, um, those kids, a lot of those kids, like you said, come from different type of homes than most of the people that they're having to face as encounter, especially yeah. in the smaller towns and different communities where it's more uh, lucrative on monetarily gain. Yeah. So, you know, I get it, man. I understand. Yeah. And I was told to ask you, um, do you have any affiliation with East Texas or Marshall? Uh, actually, my my uh, my ex wife uh, uh, and my kids, their, their grandparents are from the Longview area, and okay. by, by way of Marshall. Okay, okay. Uh, because okay. Uh, the the, uh, the grandma, their grandmother and grandfather actually played, went to Pemberton High School, which no longer exists. It was a black school in Marshall. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, uh, and uh, what's my favorite barbecue places in Marshall too? Uh, which one? Bodacious. Uh, Bodacious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's my favorite one by far. The Marshall location. Only uh, the Marshall yeah. location. Yes, yeah, that's the number one spot. <laughs> Can you have one in, um, where do we uh, always They got stop them at? all up and down 20 when you get up through there, all the way back up in uh, Tur uh, Tyler. I don't know if the I one still, there was one in Arlington, too. Yeah, no, 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 no. Tyler, we stop at the one in Tyler a lot, too, and that one is Longview okay. as well. Longview, yeah. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, the number exactly. one spot is the Marshall spot. Marshall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, I had one more question. Go so. ahead. Um, so... Your kids, um, your son, does yeah. he play football? Uh, he hasn't played yet. Right now he's been playing basketball. You know, he, he want to be Steph Curry. Oh, okay, okay. Yes. That's who he want to be? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, Is so, he any good? Yeah, yeah, he got a lot of potential. You know, he got to learn to put in that work, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, but but he's got a lot of potential. He's hit a growth spurt, so, you know, he got a chance. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> he, he, you know, I want to talk to you about – uh, you've said Coach Sample's name a, a few times, and yeah. we know that he's been uh, right there at it, in, in uh, fourth and inches, as I call it. Yeah. He's been right there at it and hadn't really uh, done it yet. But at the end of the day, he's 
he's done a great job coaching those uh, kids over in Duncanville. Yeah. And um, just want to get your insight on it a little bit, just kind of because I know he mean a lot to you because he you you played under him as well, right? Yes, it sure did. Let's talk, let's talk about a little bit a little bit about Coach Sam. The Coach Sam is probably one of the best mind manipulators that there, there is. You know, like <laughs> like like his way. And a lot of times as a coach, you got to understand you can't be Coach Samples because it's just some things that he does that I, I, I underneath from 14 years as a as a coach and four years as a player, and I still can't wrap my mind around like how he's able to do some things sometimes. But you know, he definitely has a blueprint and a plan that that that's effective everywhere he's been. You can go back to Lincoln. We went to a state championship with some kids from South Dallas. Skyline, we went. He went to the semifinals twice. You know, right there, right there on the edge. Lost to Kyler Murray one year. We lost to South Lake Carroll another year. He went to Duncanville, took a program that was a losing program. And, and out of the last four years, they've been the state championship three out of four times. And the time they didn't go, they lost in the semifinals. So you know, he's a guy that has the blueprint. And what I tell a lot of a lot of times is that uh, he's like the Godfather, and that and his DNA is in a lot of people. So even when I won, it still traces back to him. His DNA. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not about, you know, it's, it's kind of like when you think of a Mo Luther King speech. You know, like he, like he said, he may not see it, but he going to inspire the mind to be able to get it done. And sometimes I think as people, we look down when people don't get it all the way done, but we don't look at what they inspired because without him, it's no me. We're not talking right now today. Mm -hmm. So some things are bigger than a victory because he may inspire 10 more minds to want to be do what he did and see that it is possible. And then now I'm inspiring somebody to say, okay, the next generation can get over the top. And now what's to stop the next generation from being like, well, hey, we, we, we can do this perennially every year, annually. You know, we got a chance. So that's my biggest thing with him is that, that, that he's laid the groundwork and showed what success is and how to be successful at different programs, not one. And see, and when people try to label him as just an African-American coach, I ask them to go find coaches of any race that, is, that have went to multiple schools and had the success that he's had at the level that he's had, and there's not any. Wow. That's a special guy, man. Yeah. Coach Samples. Man, I'm going to try to get him on the show. Uh, Got to get him on the show. What yeah. was his words to you when you won? Uh, actually, you know, we, we didn't talk until the, the parade. You know, cause we, we got like a father-son relationship. Right. You know, like, you know, as a son, sometimes you ready to get out the house. When I was underneath, I'm like, man, I don't do my own thing. <laughs> but but you then when you leave, you start to understand. Understand why did he uh, do what he did. Yeah, well, mm. why did the father act a certain way? Or right. Why did he handle it this way? So then when you get your own house, then you start realizing, okay, he wasn't tripping. It. I get where he was coming from. Right. So, uh, you know, we talked at the parade. You know, he was just telling me congratulations and that he was proud of me. And, and you know, I did what I was supposed to do. That's good. Man, that's, that's I love it, man. Um Coach Samples is, is one that, like I say, I got to get him on the show. I'm going to be working mm -hmm. on that. That's my mm -hmm. next. Everybody done promised he'd be over here. They all call me, man, we got to get him over yes. there. And, I, and, and, and I'm going to hold you accountable too now. Yes. You know what I'm saying? We yes. got to make it happen. Um, I'm going to ask you something off the wall because we, we winding down now. Um, who, was the first, who was the fastest kid that you ever coached uh, in that 40-yard dash? The fastest kid probably was uh, either – Probably Mark Fisher, a kid Mark at at, at Lincoln. Yeah, he was fast. Yeah, yeah, he could fly. You remember his time? Uh, it was probably like four, three, something. You know, in high school time. That's but, bad. That's, but, that's a bad boy. What year was that? Uh, it was like in two thousand four. Okay. But the boy yeah. could fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was. But he that was. don't mean you can you you won't hit that hole and, and do what you got to do. Yeah, you got to have you yeah. got to have a talent. I've seen some guys that were quick on their feet. Yeah, that was able to maneuver in a way to where a fast guy couldn't do it like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, nah. You got to have some heart too. You know, it's some obstacles in the way and getting to the end zone or covering and things like that though. Yeah. So it all goes hand in hand. If, uh, what, what player do you have for this upcoming year that we should keep our eye on? Hey, it's not. It's not, a, not a one. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I, I could answer that for you. Oh, yeah, okay. you yeah. know. I mean, we 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 got a we got a group of players and and on all sides of the ball that, that that'll be highly recruited. You know, chance to possibly you know have a good college career to, to play on the, on Sundays in the NFL. Man. You know, I, I probably got about five or six that I think could possibly have a chance. 
Uh, how can well? I, first of all, let me say, being that we've been here for fifteen years, if there's ever a kid in need yes. and needs some shoes, or he ain't making it, please make sure you reach out. Unique Fashion has been a, a a hub for that type of stuff okay. ever since we got here. Yes, sir. So at the end of the day, that's between you and I. You okay. know what I mean? Um, or a kid that um, don't have it, or you know, and doing very well in school, yes. and yes. just as a reward. Yeah, let us yeah. Know. That's okay. what we want. Well, we want to put something together like that with you. Um, and coach samples when I get to meet him. Um, yeah. Second of all, if a kid or if anybody's having issues and they, they need somebody to talk to, uh, how could they get a hold to you? Uh, you can always uh, email me at uh, ctodd at dallasisd.org. You can email me or you can call the school at uh, 214-932-7000 and uh, they'll, they'll send you down to the football office. And wow. they don't have to be a part of that school to be able to reach out to you, right? No, 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 no. If it's a situation, and that's the thing about us, like like we help kids, you know, over there south of the cliff. You know, that's why I say it's way bigger than me. You know, we got Derrick Bat T, our principal, you know, Coach Mays. We got people that, that that's big in the community, you know, to help out in a lot of ways. And not only kids go to sock. You know, we're about helping kids, you know, whether they go to whatever school they go to. Because like I tell people all the time, you better help them and try to change them. Mm-hmm. Rather than one day they be the one robbing you. Exactly. That's it, man. Yeah. Well, well, I definitely like I said we want to catch y'all while we can. Uh, I know uh, right now, um, maybe uh, some whatever good time I'm gonna be. Like I said, I'm gonna yeah. be. We gonna talk offline here in a second. But I want to tell you, thank you. We love you. Yes. I want to ask one question. I want you to list your top three coaches of all time, dead or alive. Wow. <laughs> That's a good question. Uh. I'm, I'm gonna stick to football, so I, I, I'm gonna have to say uh, I'm gonna okay. have to say Nick Saban. Nick Saban, okay. What what team was he? Uh, he's the head coach for Alabama. Okay. The the way he's able to sustain things, you know, and and and, and, and mesh those high egos that he gets every year. Mm. I'm gonna say uh, Belichick. Okay, uh, I've so heard of him. Able yeah. to doing that on the NFL level, and then when when it comes to high school, I'm gonna say Coach Samples. Yeah, 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 because. Because of the way he's able to have success everywhere, so you can take a Todd Dodge. He's had success at Westlake, but what's the average uh, 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 money generated by that school? Yeah. It's millionaires. Yeah. South Lake is millionaires. That's right. But what did he do when he was at Newman, uh, Newman Smith? Nobody mm-hmm. ever talked about that. Yeah, yeah. No, so you I know, hear you. you know. So when you're that able to do sense. it in different areas, I'm talking about you know in these areas that yeah, we live yeah, in, where, yeah, the world we live yeah, in. Yeah, where, where, where you gotta. <laughs> <laughs> a kid is making a decision to either play sports or go sell drugs to That's make right. money for his family. Mm-hmm. And you got to talk that kid out of selling drugs to, to think of a long-term goal about going to college and being successful. That's a lot different than a lot of things they did with out there. So that's why I put him in, I put him as the high school version of those guys. Man. I like that you said that, but how could you, like, if you know about a child that um, in that situation, how would you talk them out of going to sell drugs and Staying in school and all of that. You know, you, you got to relate it to, you know, it may be short-term success, but what's the long-term gain for you? You know, you got you, you got to tell them it, it's sometimes, you know, you, you connect them with people that's able to maybe help them in situations where they don't feel, maybe get a job. You know, hey, just try this job. You know, they going to look after you, but just make sure you're there on time, and that's going to provide you with some money. It may not be what you would make out on the streets, but it, your, your health and, and, and your safety will be a lot <laughs> You know, it'll be a lot better. So it's about just reaching those kids and just having some real talks to them and, and explain the situations that you've seen coming up about the guys that didn't go that route. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. No, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. And um, like I said, I, we appreciate you and uh, we love you. And um, uh, if you ever need us, we're here. Thanks a lot. And and, and we definitely uh, love what you're doing. Keep on keep on keeping hope alive in those children's lives. Hey, we will do. And hey, y'all man. Keep doing it too. Yes, sir. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we have. Yeah.